I think national insurance is the forgotten tax. It's, it's overlooked uh, by most people, they just accept it. Um, but to put it into context, if you're a basic rate taxpayer earning between 11 and a half and 45,000 pounds, for every extra pound of net pay you receive, the treasury is getting over 67p. Um, so th there's a massive lump of money you're not getting. And of that 67p, 29p is income tax. And the rest, which is 38p, is national insurance. So national insurance exceeds income tax. Of that 38p, um, I think 18p is what's called employees' national insurance, and 20p is the employer's national insurance. Now you might think, oh well, that's what the employer pays. But really, if it didn't exist, you, you know, employers would be getting more in their pay packet. So really, it, you could argue the employees paying. Um, 38p in, in, in NI for every one pound they receive in the net pay. So it's very costly. It's generally accepted with a shrug. We don't really think about it. Um, and we think somehow that it's paying for our state pension or even that it's paying for the NHS. But really, it's just going to the Treasury like any other tax. Um, the only benefits there are is if you pay any NI in a year, whether it be 10p or £10,000, you get a tick towards. The, the state pension. You need 35 ticks to get the full basic state pension. Um, so the first 10p gets at you and the rest is just is just a tax to you. Um, the other thing is if you ever want to sign on or need to sign on and get a um, contributions based job seekers allowance, they do look at the last two years of national insurance contributions to work out how much you should get. So you do if you nobody plans for being out of work, but if you are out of work you do get some benefit from paying national insurance. Um, so it's a very costly tax. A lot of what um, a lot of what accountants and businesses sometimes do is how can we avoid national insurance? And there is an ongoing battle between the state, who like people to be uh, treated as employees, where they pay employees national insurance, employers national insurance, and then maybe the taxpayers, where they'd rather be classed as self-employed or through a limited company, because self-employed workers only pay nine percent national insurance. And through a limited company, you can avoid it, more or less, more avoid it altogether if it's your own limited company. Um, and a lot of court cases recently revolve around national insurance. The Uber case, um, uh, the Treasury is going to make a lot of money out of that if Uber workers are, uh, are going to be taxed like employees, where there's suddenly a lot of national insurance going the way of the Treasury. And I feel maybe some of these cases where they look like great news for the, the workers might turn out to be a hollow victory if a lot of more money ends up going out of the, their pay packets to the, to the government. Um, I have sometimes thought it would be better if we just scrapped national insurance and raised income tax. It would be simpler and there is an argument really why should someone who works and earns their money with their, the sweat of their brow has to, you know, has to pay all this national insurance, which is just an extra tax, whereas if you're sat at home letting the dividends and the interest roll in from investments, you, you don't pay this national insurance. Really, it seems unfair that the worker gets penalised rather than the, the investor. Um, but I think um, chances of the Exchequer like national insurance, they can change it without attracting attention, and I think it would be too expensive for them to do something radical like like uh, like uh, scrapping it, so it's probably here to stay, but it's something to to be aware of.